This quick start video tutorial is meant to give you a very simple overview of how you can progress from raw imaging data to interactive and traceable plots that can be shared with a Mesmerize project. So for this tutorial, I will use a simple data set from the Allen Institute, which consists of two photon recordings in the visual cortex while the mouse is presented with sinusoidal gratings at various orientations. I decided to use something uh, simple that most people are quite familiar with. However, many features of Mesmerize, which I'm about to show you, can be applied to a broad range of experiments and organisms. And for more details on other organisms for which Mesmerize um, has been used on, you can take a look at uh, our paper and other videos which will come out. So when you open Mesmerize, uh, you get presented with the welcome window. From here, you can open a viewer for viewing image sequences, a flowchart for analysis, uh, open existing projects, or create a new Mesmerize project. The help menu has links to useful resources. If you want to report an issue or a bug, this will take you straight to the issue tracker on GitHub, from where you can report a new issue. This will take you right to the jitter if you have more general questions or want to discuss something. This will take you to the documentation homepage, and these will take you to some other specific documentation. And this will show you the current version of Mesmerize that you are running. So to start off with this tutorial, I'm going to create a simple Mesmerize project. You don't necessarily need to create um, a project uh, right in the beginning. Um, however, for this tutorial, I'll create one so that I can map stimulus information from the Allen Institute dataset. So let's create a new project by clicking this. Choose a location to create it at. Do it here. Give it a name. And when you create a new project, you will be prompted to create um, your project configuration. So over here, you basically have to enter the various types of categorical information that is important to your project. So for this example, um, the data set that I'll be uh, using has, um, has stimulus information that contains three different features. Uh, so the the gradings that this mouse is presented with has um, an orientation, um, a spatial frequency, and a temporal frequency. So I will enter three different stimulus type columns here. If you are working with um, recordings while the animal is behaving, you can create categorical um, data columns uh, for mapping behavioral periods as well, and they would go into the same place. So for now, I'll create one for orientation, spatial frequency, and temporal frequency. In order to illustrate how ROIs can be annotated, I will add two ROI type columns. Let's just call it one cell type, another one anatomical location, or anatomical position. And lastly, you can add additional custom categorical data columns, which are used for storing information that relates to an entire recording. Uh, for example, this could be an animal's age, genotype, or strain. So just to demonstrate how this would be used, I will create one uh, for storing the animal's age. And you can modify the project configuration at any time uh, throughout your project, even when you have uh, data within your project already. And you can find um, extensive information about how to think about your project configuration and your categorical data types um, in the documentation over here. Okay, let's save and apply this configuration. Okay, now that we have our project configuration for this new project, let's open a viewer. So the viewer is used for visualizing your imaging data and interfaces with various modules that allow you to annotate regions of interest, 
uh, map symbols or behavioral periods, uh, as well as interfacing with various Cayman modules for motion correction and signal extraction. And alternatively, you can also directly import regions of interest um, from Cayman outputs um, or suite to P or image J. So for this example, I will be loading a TIFF file from the Allen uh, Institute dataset. So this module can be used for importing either 2D or 3D uh, image sequences that are stored as TIFF files. Let's select the file. And after selecting the file, you will need to choose a load method. So the as array method is usually the fastest and should work for most TIFF files. Imread uh, should work for all TIFF files, but can sometimes be a bit slower. I'll use as array for this. You can set a custom access order if the access order of your image file is not the usual access order that most 2D and 3D TIFF files use. And lastly, you can choose to import metadata from one of the formats listed here. So the metadata for uh, this file is just a simple JSON file that looks like this. Uh, certain modules such as um, some Cayman modules and some downstream analysis processes uh, will require the sampling rate uh, of your recording. So it's important for you to import your metadata. And if you have metadata that's stored in other formats, it's actually quite simple uh, for you to add more metadata methods here. And I'll provide a link in the description uh, to the documentation, which tells you how to do that. So if the file name of the metadata file is the same as the file name uh, of the TIFF file, it will find it automatically. So let's click this to load this image into the work environment. Okay, now we can use the GUI to scroll through the video in time. We can zoom and pan around the image. You can change the min-max levels, or you can choose different um, color maps. And from scrolling through this video, you can notice that most of the cells of interest are on the left side of the image, so we can crop the rest of this out. This can help reduce computation time for certain processes. And as I mentioned earlier, this dataset contains stimulus information. So we can use the stimulus mapping module to add this data to the viewer work environment. And this can also be used for mapping behavioral periods, so not just stimulus periods. And of course, you can skip this step if your recording doesn't contain any stimulus or behavior information. So when you open the stimulus mapping module, you are presented with this GUI, which contains tabs. And each of these tabs correspond exactly to the categorical data columns that you have entered for stimulus type in your project configuration. So you can manually enter stimulus information if you wish. And the way that you can do that is click Add Row to add a new stimulus period. So give it a name, let's say 90 for 90 degrees. Start time in frames, end time in frames. You can choose a color which will be used for visualizing it on the timeline here. So add some for here. And your stimulus periods don't have to be in chronological order.
And when you are finished manually annotating your stimulus information, you can click on set all maps and that will import the data in the stimulus mapping module to the viewer work environment. And then you can choose which stimulus map you want to visualize on the timeline. So ORI, as you can see, this information corresponds to what's displayed now, All right. SF and TF. So all the stimulus information for this recording is actually stored in a CSV file, which looks like this. So there's a start and end time for a stimulus period, um, and then the stimulus uh, type. And we can actually just import that CSV using Mesmerize's script editor. So what the script um, does is actually really simple. It opens uh, the CSV file as a data frame, and then the stimulus mapping module can actually take um, one data frame each in order to set each of these tabs. So it just loads this CSV file, which I just shown you, and then creates one data frame for orientation, spatial frequency, and temporal frequency, and sets the GUI from that. So let's run this. And as you can see, all of that data has been instantly imported into the stimulus mapping module. And let's set all maps. So now you can see how all of the stimulus maps can be visualized on the timeline. And any information that you enter into your stimulus mapping module is also carried throughout downstream analysis. So for example, if you later on want to use the flowchart in order to look at like stimulus tuning curves or, or anything else that relates to analysis based on stimulus or behavioral periods, it all gets carried over. Okay, so back to the image. When scrolling through the video, you can notice that there's quite some movement. And we can use the Cayman Libraries motion correction module to correct for this. So first off, I'm going to create a new batch so that we can batch process the motion correction with a few variants for the motion correction parameters so that we can finally choose the one that worked best. So let's go here and create a new batch. I'm going to create this batch on a fast file system because motion correction steps write large files. Give it a name. Okay, there's our new empty batch. Okay, now that we have a new batch, Let's open the Cayman Motion Correction module for parameter entry. And I would highly recommend going through the official Cayman demos and documentation to understand all of these parameters uh, so that you can use this tool much more effectively. But briefly, the max shifts X and max shifts Y are upper limits for a rigid correction of this video. Let's actually dock this module. So one way to sort of estimate useful uh, numbers for uh, max shifts X and Y is to use the measure tool. So to use the measure tool, we can click on a point and then try to navigate through the video to try and figure out when that landmark moves a bit. That wasn't the best option. Maybe maybe this cell. So maybe something like that. So 
make another measure tool. Okay, so when you hover over the measure tool with your cursor, the displacement in the X and Y axis will be displayed here, as well as the displacement along the hypotenuse. So let's enter that here. Let's enter something a bit higher, say five. Okay, don't need these anymore. Okay, let's do two iterations of rigid motion correction. And then the strides and overlaps parameters are for splitting the video into a grid. And then the Cayman motion correction um, library will split, will perform motion correction in each box of this grid and then merge everything together. And to better understand that, please take a look at their paper. Maybe a bit too much. That should work all right. And let's try entering the another iteration of parameters. Might be a bit much, but let's just do it. Okay, so as you can see, all three batch items with the parameter variance that we've entered are visible here. And when you click on a batch item, you the parameters will be displayed here. And on the top, the first line is a unique identifier for that batch item. So for example, you can see that the parameters that we changed for these variants are the strides and overlaps. And you can see that they vary in each of these three. Okay, and let's start this batch in the top. This will prompt if you want to clear all of your work environments and that's recommended, it'll help free up RAM that this image is currently taking. And when a batch is running, the batch items run in external processes. This allows you to do other things in Mesmerize while the batch is running. And the standard out from that process is continually updated here. And you can set the maximum number of threads that batch items are allowed to use by going to the welcome window, configuration, system configuration, and right here, you can choose how many threads that Mesmerize is allowed to use. So this batch will take about 15 minutes to complete, so I'll continue this tutorial um, in part two.